Well, it's been quite the day here in Ottawa. We again tried to bring the cannoli issue up in front of the Ag Committee, trying to get the Minister of Agriculture, the Minister of Trade, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs to come in front of the Committee and let us know their game plan for China. Again, the Liberals do what Liberals do very well. They have a majority of the Committee, so they shut it down. They basically amended the motion to such a factor that it only would include officials and industry representatives, basically the same people that are asking the questions that we're asking uh, of the government. You know, we wanted to see a game plan. We wanted to see that they had an understanding of the issues. We wanted to know that they had Canadian farmers' backs. Uh, when I looked across the aisle when we were talking, we had one member of the Liberal Party doing all the speaking, and his sole responsibility was very clear, and that was to actually bring forward the amendment, neuter the committee, and uh, make sure that the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Trade, the Minister of, of uh, uh, Agriculture didn't show up in front of the committee, which is really disappointing. Now next week on Tuesday in the Trade Committee, we are going to have the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Trade. But again, the Liberals have played trickery here. We had agreed one hour each for each of those ministers to come in front of the committee so that everybody had a chance to talk to them and get an idea of what their game plan is moving forward with the markets in China. They changed it. They put both ministers together in one hour and they brought in officials for the other hour. So it's an inability for us to even ask appropriate questions. And it's an inability of time or not enough time to actually have the ministers present a game plan going forward. As we know, this is such a serious issue back in Western Canada, but it's a serious issue for all of Canada. Canola is a huge crop. It's a profitable crop. It's a crop that pays the bills. It's the crop that farmers use to buy new trucks and buy new cars and to buy goods and services right across Canada that are produced right across Canada. Every time that price drops, it's the farmer who loses money. So we've talked about a dollar a bushel drop in price, and to put that in perspective, if you farm a thousand acres of canola with an average bushel of 48 bushels to an acre, that's $40,000 of disposable income that farmer has lost. It is drastic. It is really, really tough. And now they're sitting there saying, what do I do? What do I plant? Do I plant more wheat? Do I plant more barley? Do I plant more peas or lentils? And they don't have the answers. And we were hoping the ministers could come forward and say, this is what we know. This is our game plan. Provide some of that comfort for these producers so that when they put that seed in the ground, they know that the government's doing everything it can to ensure market access into all our markets. They don't have that here today. And you know what? It's farmers that are going to be paying for Trudeau's mistakes. It was Trudeau that created the problem. Everybody says that. Everybody understands our product's the best product in the world. This is not a quality issue. This is a political issue. And the reality is, it deserves a political answer. We need an answer from this government, and they refuse to give it. We need a game from this government. They don't have one. We don't even have an ambassador in China. So you can see my frustration. I get mad very quickly on this topic because I understand farmers are in a, in a situation where they can't control what the outcome is going to be, yet they're going to pay all the bills. So we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep fighting. I know Luke from Quebec, he's doing his best to... Uh, to hold these people to account, and it's great to have that passion, a Quebecer fighting for Western Canadian farmers, that's awesome. And we encourage that just like we fight for maple, maple growers in Quebec. You know, that's one thing about this country. It's a great country. We work together, and when you don't have a leader that's dividing us, when you have a leader that's bringing us together like Andrew Shearer will, it'll be a great country in this world, and I look forward to being part of that government. So thank you, and we'll keep tuned.